Good day everyone. Welcome to lecture 20 of this course on computer organization and architecture. So this particular lecture is the continuation of our previous lecture. We have already completed the fetch stage in lecture number 19 and we were discussing about the decode stage. So in the decode stage we said and for that particular stage we said that we have to perform three operations. In instruction is to be decoded. Second, find the value of source operands, read the register file, okay, reg file, and the third was to calculate immediate and branch target. The first two functionalities we completed in that particular lecture, and the aim of today's lecture is to discuss how we will calculate immediate and branch target. So we know that immediate is there in I format i format s format u format sb format and uj format instructions in all these instructions we have for all these instructions we have to calculate the immediate okay there is only r format instructions that do not carry any immediate value so for i format instructions in instruction 20 to 31 if we have an instruction, the bits from 20 to 31, they represent the immediates 0 to 11 bits. Okay. And then we have to convert these 12 bits, 0 to 11, into 32 bit immediate. Okay. 32 bit immediate we have to convert. And how we are converting it, these 12 bits into 32 bit immediate? That is done either by sign extension or by adding zeros. Sign extension for signed numbers and adding zeros for unsigned numbers. Okay, That is for I format instruction. For S format instruction, the immediate is the 12 bits of the immediate, 0 to 11. So these are stored at two locations. In instructions, 25 to 31 stores immediate 5 to 11 bits and in instruction is 7 to 11 it stores immediates 0 to 4 bits okay so for forming the immediate of in case of s format in instruction we have to get these two components in the instruction and we will get the immediate and from these two parts we will then form an immediate immediate of how many bits 32 bits the first 12 bits will come from these two components and the remaining bits will be either sign extension or adding the zeros likewise for u format instruction is u format instruction is in instruction 12 to 31 stores the Immediates 12 to 31 bits. Now remain is the immediates 0 to 11 bits. Those bits are filled with zeros to form a 32 bit immediate. Similarly goes for SB and UJ format instructions. So we, we will make a circuit for calculating the immediate. So we will say that we have a logic like this. We have an I format for I format instruction is so we will calculate we will give in instruction 20 to 31 as input and from this portion it will calculate it as immediate. We will give the same instruction to S format and this S format takes input in instruction 25 to 31 or we can say it extracts these two parts and in instruction 7 to 11 and using these two components of the instruction it will have its own immediate then comes the u format it takes in instruction 12 to 31 
from these bits it can form the imaged then we have sb format if we have an sb format in a structure it takes input or we can say it can form imaged using these components in instruction 31 in instruction 7 seventh bit of the instruction in instruction is 8 to 11 bits and in instruction is 25 to 31 okay and likewise we have uj format so uj format can make an image using the following in instruction components 31 in instruction 20th bit in instruction 12 to 19 and in instruction 21 to 30 okay so from these bits it can calculate it as image it likewise as b format in instruction so let's say our instruction is, uh, for example, add i x1, comma x2, comma 3. This is our instruction. So basically, what what is this instruction? This is an i format instruction. So i format can find its image using the instruction is 20 to 30, 31 bits. Okay, it will find the image. However, we are designing the circuit in such a way that I format will also work for this instruction. Okay. S format will work for this instruction and will find the image. U format, this block will uh, process this instruction and find the image. This will also find the image. This will also find the image. This will use these components and this will use these particular components. However, we know that this instruction is the I format instruction. So all the other images are useless they are not the right images the right image is the output given by the i format so from these possible images that are generated by these five circuits we have to choose a one and for choosing that particular one we will use a multiplexer and this particular multiplexer takes five inputs five inputs will be i format s format the image given by the s format image given by the u format image given by sp format block this block and image given by uj format block and from these five it will choose one okay and we know that for this particular instruction which one it should choose it should choose the output given by the i format block Okay, and it should ignore these particular images. And how will the multiplexer choose the particular this this particular image? It chooses based on control lines. So it will have three control lines, and these control lines or signals, these will be generated by a control unit. Control unit will also get this instruction this particular instruction and it will see that this particular instruction is add i so it will give the control signals to this multiplexer that you have to choose this particular input so let's suppose if the three control signals are 0 0 0 it will choose image i format if the control signals are 0 0 1 it will choose s format if it is uh, 0 one zero it will choose u format if it is one zero zero it will choose sb format if it is one zero one it will choose uj format so our control unit will generate signal zero 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 for this particular instruction so our multiplexer the output will be this particular image and all the other images will be cancelled out they won't be forwarded so we will get the correct image value Okay. Likewise, in case of branch instructions, for example, we have a branch instruction. And branch instruction is of SB format. So in branch instruction SB format, we find out the image. Basically, image is our offset there. 
branch offset and here our control signal for that particular instruction will generate signal as 100 100 so it will choose this particular image and this particular image will be our offset and after finding the offset we will calculate the branch target branch target or branch pc and that branch pc will be equal to program counter plus offset this will be our branch target or branch offset for example in case of if we have an add in instruction okay so we are saying that we have this multiplexer we have these blocks i format s format u format sb format and uj format these are our our blocks and these are giving the image it and from these images we are choosing one image it based on the type of instruction and that is determined by our control signals let's say we, and after getting the image it we have a branch unit branch unit that calculates the branch target and how it calculates the branch target it takes pc as input and this image it this image it is offset this is our branch pc or branch target let's say our instruction is add i x1 comma x2 comma 3 okay so our uh, these will generate the image it this will generate its image it this also this one this one and this one and this uh, multiplexer will choose which one this particular image it because this is i format instruction so it will choose this particular image it and this image it reaches here now branch unit calculates branch target but we know that this is not a branch instruction so why are we calculating the branch target we are calculating the branch target as i said previously that we will calculate all the components for all the instructions whatever we have we want to calculate we will calculate it so we are calculating a branch target here for what type of instruction add i but we know that this is not a branch instruction so this won't be of any use we are calculating this but later on we won't use this branch target or branch pc and this will be used only in case of branch instructions because later on in the execute stage in the execute stage for this particular instruction we will generate a signal is branch taken as equal to 0 since is branch taken is equal to 0 and we said that if is branch taken is equal to 0 then here if branch taken is 0 this control signal is zero that means we have to choose pc plus 4 so in that particular scenario branch target or branch pc is not allowed to go forward so we are not using branch tar target for those particular instructions so we are calculating the branch target for all the instructions but we are using branch target for only those instructions which are the branch instructions and which are taken branches because only for taken branches branch target will be used for not taken branches the branch target will not be used the update will be pc plus 4 okay so so we have completed the decode stage and the four uh, and the three uh, operations that we have to perform in the decode stage was the first operation was to was to decode the instruction to find out all the components second was to read our register file to find the source operands and the third was to uh, calculate image it and branch target so we can say we we are having an a fetch unit and the output from the fetch was in instruction so this was taken pc and please remember pc is input to every every stage of the uh, of the processor so pc is input to fetch it is also input to tower 
second stage which is decode stage so our second stage decode stage has an input instruction and and program counter and output is what is the output the output is the value of registers op1 and op2 okay components for example op code the type of operation that we have to perform also immediate and branch target so these are the outputs from the decode stage not only op code op code but also func3 and func7 op1 op2 op code func3 func7 immediate and branch target so these are the outputs from the decode stage now these outputs go as input to the next stage and what is the next stage the next stage is execute and this pc also goes as input to the execute stage okay. so the next stage in our processor is the execute stage and the functional and the various functions that we have to perform in the uh, execute stage is to perform arithmetic and logic operations depending upon the type of instruction second generate effective memory address for example in case of Uh, load and store instructions we have to generate the effective memory address and third functionality is to generate outcome of a branch that means this will generate this particular signal is branch taken so it will execute the branch instruction and based on the outcome of this branch instruction it will generate this particular signal is branch taken whether the branch is taken or not so these are the three functionalities that our execute stage has to perform so you can see that for let's say we have different format instructions for example r format is there for r format instructions our uh, this uh, execute stage has to operate the rs1 and rs2 what is rs1 rs1 is our op1 and rs2 will our op2 operand sorry rs1 will be our op1 and rs2 will be our op2 these are the values we have to perform op1 operation op2 so operation may be plus subtraction or exclusive or or any operation there and in i format what we have to do in i format we have to op1 operation immediate we have to operate on op1 and immediate and the operation can be anything okay and in load instruction load instruction we have to calculate the effective memory address in case of s format instruction we again have to calculate effective memory address and in u format instruction nothing is to be done in the execute stage because basically u format instruction it loads immediate the calculated immediate in the register so so our execute stage is not required to do anything for u format instructions and sb format okay or our another uj format instructions in sb format instructions we have to we have to generate only the is branch taken signal so let's first design the alu alu means which can perform these operations sorry these three the r format operations i format instruction operations load and store so for r format and i format what what will be the functionality of our alu so we have an alu this is our alu arithmetic logical unit it takes two inputs one is of one and another input 
द सेकेंड इनपुट द सेकेंड इनपुट विल बी आइदर आर एस टू और इमिजिएट ओके इन केस ऑफ लोड इंस्ट्रक्शन द इफेक्टिव मेमरी एड्रेस विल बी आर एस वन प्लस इमिजिएट एंड इन केस ऑफ स्टोर इंस्ट्रक्शन इज इट विल बी आर एस वन प्लस इमिजिएट ओके इफेक्टिव मेमरी एड्रेस so in r format we have to do of1 plus of1 operation of2 in i format of1 operation immediate in load format of1 this rs1 is of1 of1 plus immediate and for uh, this uh, s format or store format of1 plus immediate so only for r format the second operand is rs2 but for all the other three formats the second operand is immediate so we have to choose either rs2 or we have to choose the immediate so we will have a multiplexer here and that multiplexer will have two inputs one is op2 and another is immediate and from these two inputs one is given as input and a and so for r format instruction is the output of of uh, this uh, multiplexer this mux this mux will be op2 and for other format instruction is i format load or store instruction is this will be immediate okay so we have a control signal here which says is r format so this is a control signal and this control signal will be generated by our control unit so is r format if yes it is r format r format means this particular instruction instruction belonging to this format and we have 10 such instructions and is r format and our control unit will determine the type of instruction using op code func3 and func7 we will see later how our control unit generates these signals so it will generate the signal if this is r format so this signal will be true so it will choose op2 however if this is not r format it will choose immediate and based on the output here this will go as input to the alu alu will perform the operation based on the op code func3 and func7 based on these three things it will calculate the operation and we will have a result so for example in case of here in case of r format result will be the operation of these two rs1 operation rs2 and that result this result is to be stored in destination register likewise in r format the result will be the operation between the op1 and immediate in case of load result is what is this result in case of load this is effective memory address in case of store this result is effective memory address so the result is either the result to be stored in to be stored in register or it will be effective memory address this result Okay. now we have handled these instructions r format i format load and store for u format and sb format instructions we will check what the u format and sb format we have to handle sb format instruction is so for handling sb format instruction is we have a branch unit branch unit in execute state so we will see it later on and this output goes as input to a multiplexer so and it also has uh, another thing going on that is the image date okay so from these two it chooses one out of these two and this is chosen based on is u format so this is our control signal is u format so if the instruction is not u format if this is not this format so that means it is one among these these or sb format okay if it is one among these that means the output should be the result here 
okay however if it is u format then in for u format in instruction this has nothing to do we don't have to do anything with this result for u format in instructions we simply require immediate and that immediate will be written to a register in the uh, next stage okay so we will choose in that case this immediate fine now we have handled this in instruction as well u format s format load i format and r format now remains the sb format in case of sb format okay what should be the output of alu the output of alu should be branch target address and that address is generated by which which stage decode stage and that address is input to the execute stage so branch target is input so it this execute stage has a branch target so if for branch instruction is the output should be branch target so we have another multiplexer here this is our multiplexer and it says is branch and this gives the output so if this is a branch we will choose this as the output bt however if it is not a branch then we will choose this result as the output and the final result that we, we will get is called alu result so the final output from the execute stage is alu result and what is this alu result this alu result will be either branch target or it will be simply immediate or it will be this result so alu result will be so i will write it here so this alu result alu result it may be either for example in case of r format it will be op1 operation op2 in case of i format it will be op1 operation immediate in case of s and load instructions s format and load instructions it will be effective memory address okay in case of u format it will be simply immediate okay in case of sb format sb format or we can say uj format this alu result is the branch target address or branch pc okay so this will be either op1 or op op2 effective memory address immediate or branch pc so what is the output of an execute stage so here we have an execute stage this was our alu okay and it was getting the inputs from decode stage and using these inputs the output will be alu result and this alu result will be either uh, op1 operation op2 op1 operation immediate or effective memory address or immediate or branch target address and another thing that is the functionality of branch unit that is the functionality of execute stage is the branch unit branch unit means the unit that is required to to generate is branch taken signal okay so what is the uh, what will be the uh, structure of branch unit it will be like this so we have a comparator comparator takes two inputs because for all the branch in instruction is we have register 1 and register 2 two, two source operands it will took take op1 and op2 it will also take op code func3 
as the input and it will receive a signal is sb is this a branch instruction the instruction it is executing or we can say let's say if uh, opcode is not required here only func3 is required it will receive a signal is branch instruction if the instruction is branch see if the instruction is not branch the comparator will give output as zero so if sb is zero that means it is not branch the instruction is not branch the outcome will be zero okay if sb is one if sb is one then it will check then it will compare op one and op two and after comparing op one and op two if the result is true then output will be one if the result is false then output will be zero okay and here the output will be either zero or one depending upon the comparison of op1 and op2 so for all the non branch instructions output will be zero but for branch instructions the output will be one or zero so this output from this branch unit is is the is branch taken signal and that goes as input to the fetch unit this branch take okay so also this alu result also goes as input to the fetch unit because this alu result is the branch pc in case of sb instructions you may have seen here that in case of sb format instructions or u for uj format these are branch instructions this alu result is the branch target or branch program counter pc branch pc okay so this was all about the branch and uh, this was all about the execute stage so our execute stage this was our execute stage it gave us alu result and is branch taken signal so this is input to fetch also this is also input to fetch fetch stage and this also goes input to our next stage which is memory access okay so let's discuss it about the fourth stage which is the memory access stage memory access stage means in this particular stage we have to access the memory and we know that for risk 5 instruction set architecture we have to access memory only in case of load and store instructions so our memory stage memory access stage it gets two signals is load is store if the instruction if it is receiving these signals if the instruction is load or the instruction is store then only this will work this stage will work otherwise it will simply forward the input for example the input to this stage was alu result otherwise it will simply forward the alu result if the instruction is not load or store however if the instruction is load or store then it will perform the function okay so in case of load or store load or store what is this alu result in case of load or store this alu result is effective memory address okay and what is contained in op2 in case of load and store instructions basically op2 is our rs2 sorry op2 is our yes rs2 so what is this rs2 in case of load yes in case of load in case of load we have to go to the effective memory address we have to go to this address and get data so in case of load memory access stage 
द आउटपुट ऑफ मेमरी एक्सेस स्टेज विल बी डेटा डेटा दैट इट गॉड फ्रॉम द मेमरी विच वी कॉल्ड लोड डेटा सो द आउटपुट ऑफ मेमरी एक्सेस स्टेज इन केस ऑफ लोड इंस्ट्रक्शन इज लोड डेटा हाउ आर इन केस ऑफ स्टोर वट वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू टेक दिस ऑप टू एंड स्टोर एट इफेक्टिव मेमरी एड्रेस सो इन केस ऑफ स्टोर देयर वोट बी एनी आउटपुट फ्रॉम द मेमरी एक्सेस स्टेज explain this in detail so we have a memory unit this is our memory access stage it takes two control signals as input is load is store and it has two inputs op2 and alu result so what is alu result here this basically alu result is the effective memory address and up to this is making sense in case of store in case of load it is of no use up to okay so this alu result and this up to this alu result is stored in a register inside the memory access stage which we called memory address register m a r memory address register and this data goes to another register which we called mdr memory data register mdr so for accessing a memory we have two special registers mar and mdr okay so in case of load instruction let's take the load instruction the alu result the effective memory address is loaded in memory address register this memory address register is sent to the data memory data memory and from the data memory we will get the data okay we will get the data back data data stored at this particular address and this data is given as output from this stage and this output we called load result and what we have to do we have to take this load result so our load instructions are like this load x1 comma 3 x2 okay so this is our effective memory address so we have to get the data from this address so wh what we call that data load result and we have to take this load result and store in x1 okay and in case of store instructions let's say we have a store instruction in case of store alu result is taken in memory address register and op2 is provided in memory data register so memory address register sends the address to data memory and from memory data register we send the data to the memory and this data is stored at this particular address okay and in that case there is no output so this is all about the memory access stage after the memory access stage comes our last stage which is register write back now we have to write back the value in the register for example in case of r format i format what we have to write we have to write alu result in our destination register in case of load we have to write load result in destination register in case of u in instruction we have to same we have to write alu result in rd basically for u format alu result is the image okay also in case of instructions like what are the instructions for example the instruction is call instruction jl in case of jl or jalr instruction 
let's say these two instructions we call we call these two instructions call we have to write pc plus 4 in rd so you know that jl x1 comma then some address so uh, this will jump to this particular address and stores PC plus 4 in X1. So for R format, I format and U, ALU result is written in, in RD. Okay. For load, what is stored? Load result is to be chosen, which is written in RD. And in case of call, we have to write PC plus 4. 4 in rd so what we require we require a multiplexer okay so multiplexer so we will have three inputs we will have alu result we will have load result and we will have pc plus 4 this is pc pc plus These are the three inputs. And from these three, we have to choose one. And which one to choose? That is chosen based on the control signals. Is load is one control signal. Is call is another control signal. And these control signals will be generated by our control unit. So if it is zero, zero, neither it is load, neither it is call so we will choose alu result if this is a load instruction so load is one that means it is load call is zero if it is call that means load is zero and call is one it will choose this instruction and the output which we called a result then we have to write this result in where we have to write we have to write it in a register file this is our reg file so this register file gets this data and gets the address. And what is the address? RD. RD is the address. And at this address, address basically this is the register. Let's suppose this is third register. At the third register, it will store this result. Okay. And this is this will be the end of instruction execution. And this also completes our data path for risk five instruction set architecture. So in our data file data path, we designed five stages: fetch, instruction fetch, then the output goes to the decode, then from decode to execute, then we have memory access and at the end we have a register write back so these are the five stages that are there in the data path basically these are the five basic stages in some other architectures there are more than five stages let's go eight stages are there nine stages are there 13 stages are there so but we are sticking to only five stages because these are the common stages that every instruction has to go through and from these five stages there are uh, there are many instructions that only go through four stages for example there are some instructions that do not require the memory access stage but still they have to pass through the memory access stage okay so these are the five common stages or these are the union of all the stages that instructions may have to pass in order to get executed and this completes our data path now in our discussion we said at various points we were discussing that this will be a control signal for example is load is call these are the control signals or is uh, is unsigned or is sb these were the control signals and we said that these control signals are generated by a control unit and we didn't spoke about the control unit so our focus next focus or uh, next focus uh, of the next lectures will be to design the control unit
control unit that can generate these control signals and how it generates these control signals. So we will discuss the control path for risk five instruction set architecture. So in our next lecture, lecture number 14, we will discuss the control path for risk five instruction set architecture. And after completing the control path, and we have also discussed the data path, completing these two sections, these two paths, we will have a complete processor that can implement a risk five instruction set architecture. So let's meet in the next lecture where we will be discussing about the control path, about the design of control path. Till then, goodbye.